Now let's go to the more superficial layer uh, around the great trochanter. So what we have already uh, gone through in the previous video is the uh, gluteal minimus and medius tendons. So just a brief uh, uh, ref reference to them. The anterior facet of the greater trochanter with the, the uh, minimus on top. Go to the lateral aspect, line up the tendon there, which is then parallel bend. That's the lateral facet of the greater trochanter. And then if, if this straight looking posterior uh, facet is for the posterior bend of the uh, glute minim uh, medius. So that's your deep layer. Now, between the deep layer and the superficial layer, uh, there is a bursal plane. And like in, the ro like in the rotator cuff in the shoulder, there could be potentially uh, bursitis or swelling occurring. And that bursal plane, and that's what you have to bear in mind, goes fairly far posteriorly. So don't underestimate how far posterior it goes. I'll demonstrate it in a minute when we do the dynamic test. So we go to the anterior part first. So that's your uh, anterior facet again. So that's the, the fascia, tensa fascia lata on top. And if we go posteriorly, you can see the two layers still on top. And here the muscular fibers of the um, gluteus maximus will, will be visualized. So the main thing now is to do a dynamic test. So we go back to the beginning and ask the patient in this position, lying on his side, to lift up his foot and go back. Do it slowly so you can monitor and see what happens. So in that plane between the two layers is where you uh, would find some fluid. And you can follow that more posterior if, if the patient keeps moving. And I'll go to the posterior side, keep going, keep moving. And you can see how far back you keep going, how far back you need to go to see that plane continuing. Because often the posterior part is where the fluid accumulates as the pressure pushes it into that area. Stop there for a minute. Uh, also bear in mind that bursitis in, on the lateral hip is not as common as is um, uh, often uh, thought. Uh, so you can often see tendinopathies or any other changes, but a purely a bursitis on its own is not common. But it does not mean that you can look for it and assess it on ultrasound. It's just um, not as often found. And that's it. So that's how you assess the superficial layer going over the deep layer and the lateral hip looking for bursitis or swelling or any tendinopathy that is occurring in that area. Thank you.